Good morning everybody, or Jay here with another War of the Visions video, and today's the day I'm going to do my full cloud review. I've had this guy at 120 for like three or four days now. I've gotten to use him in Guild Wars, I've gotten to use him in Arena, in PvE. Okay, let me, let me just start. This dude is as advertised. He is as good as you think he can be. I'm going to show you like everything. Skills, gear, vision cards, espers. We're going to watch some fights. We're going to tweak his AI to do what you want it to do. We're going to do all of the things that I've learned about Cloud in this full review and we're going to do them right now. Okay, now I want to start with gear because in my mind gear is by far the easiest thing to talk about like it is super simple to talk about what gear cloud wants So I'm gonna go into the client real quick and just watch this watch this. see this thing right here the buster sword Use this every single time the lightning attack up 30 is just too good not to use This is his best in slot piece of gear period after that, I think Aldoa's TMR is super good on him for the buff that gets his defense piercing rate to 100%. Um, other than that, literally just equip the gear that you're building for. This is kind of an anti-magic team with Fenrir, so I'm using an anti-magic piece of armor. If you don't have Aldoa's TMR, use something like Bells or something else to give him some agility to tweak your group's agility. Gear is very, very simple for Cloud. Buster Sword, number one, every single time. If you don't have at least two of these, go farm more, because you might use Shoots Out someday, and he might just pop off with that Buster Sword. Other than that, literally, whatever your best gear is, use it. This guy's your carry. I do think Aldoa's TMR, though, is worth a special mention. And beyond that, just literally whatever's best. So gear is very short. It's going to be the shortest segment in this video. Thank God, because there's a lot to talk about in this video. Next up, I want to talk about his espers. And for this, I have some infographs I want to put on the screen. So here they come. And first up, let's talk about Odin. I think Odin is Cloud's best in slot Esper. You see the stat line right there, 1234 HP. And like, I don't know if the devs made it 1234 HP because like it's Odin and that's cool. Or if it just happened to be like, it doesn't matter. I just noticed that. But that's nice HP. The attack at 107, you could go a little higher, but that's fine. It's that 20 agility that I really, really like. Because I favor Aldoa's TMR, for that defense pin buff, I really like to make up for missing some of that agility with the Esper. I think Odin's perfect for that. Um, as you go to Odin's skill board, you can see his potential boosts that I listed to the right. If you're running a slash attack cloud, you can get up to 30 slash attack from Odin. There's also 25 human killer on there, which is good for ranger cloud and slash attack cloud. You'll pick up some attack plus seven along the way. There's 22 accuracy on his board. There's 15 missile resist, 15 slash resist. And obviously you can't have all of those things at the same time, but you can pick and choose what's best for your build. Odin is just the number one best Esper for Cloud, in my opinion. Now, if we go over to the second graph, I have my, like, second through fourth, like, the ones I would use if I wasn't using Odin, but in no particular order. First, let's start with an MR in Coral, the Lightning Kitty. This is particularly good on a Missile Attack Cloud because he has Missile Attack up on his board, but he also has Lightning Attack up on his board, which is good for both missile and slashing attacks for cloud. The stat line, not as good though, only 16 agility, a little bit less HP, and a little bit less attack. So the MR stuff shows through in the stat line there, but you do pick up some water resist. It's a pretty good anti-water esper in general, and it will boost both his crit chance and his crit damage, which on cloud is a little bit bigger deal than on some previous units. Okay, the guard scorpion is next, or whatever the heck they renamed it to that's not guard scorpion in global. Come on, devs. Hold on, let me put let me put my let me put my face back on the screen here. Come on, devs. Anyway, I don't remember, uh, whatever. Okay. Um, it has slash attack on it, so that's going to be good for slash attack cloud. It has lightning attack, which again, good for both ways. If we look at the stat line, it has more HP than Odin, which is nice. It has more attack than Odin, which is nice. But at 15 agility, it's really middle of the pack. I really do like that agility on Odin, and that's why I favor it over Guard Scorpion. If you wanted to argue with me and say Guard Scorpion's better for Cloud, like, okay, that's fine. Guard Scorpion is really, really good. I just like the agility from Odin. It also has Missile Resist on it, Water Killer, and Lightning Resist. Like, special shout out to the Lightning Resist on Guard Scorpion because you're going to see a lot of Lightning teams in the game right now. A, a lot of us got Cloud, you guys. A lot of us did. 
there's a whole lot of Cloud, 9S, and Frederica jumping around. Okay, last up, I want to point out Omega. There is also still a lot of magic teams running around. Omega is a very good anti-magic, or as you can see how I spelled it, Anit Magic. Swap that T and that I. It's an anti-magic. It has slash attack on it, which Cloud will like. It has light killer if you're fighting like Yunus or Warriors of Light, and it has a lot of attack up on it. The stat line on Omega, also pretty good. 1300 HP, 123 attack. 14 agility is a little bit slow, but I do like Omega. Those are the four espers that I rush resonance with on Cloud, or that I'm still working on in the case of like um, Omega and Guard Scorpion, because I literally just finished Guard Scorpion. Okay, that's it for espers. I want to move next to talking about vision cards. And I think the best place to start with vision cards is the Guard Scorpion. Never mind, like I said, I know it says Scorpion Sentinel up at the top. That's a typo by the entire global development team. It is the Guard Scorpion. Anyway, good stat line for Cloud, 304 HP and 155 attack. That TP is kind of irrelevant. Um, the unit effects are particularly great. AoE resistance plus 10 and critical damage plus 5, both stats that are just tailor-made for Cloud. The uh, the global buffs are the second buffs there for the unit. It's slash attack up 10 and water resist up 10. So very good slash attack and anti-water. Now there's so much going on on this vision card. I actually have to like scoot the screen up on my uh, on my recorder here. But notice the party effects. It's an attack up by 50%. That's as good as a uh, fit. Uh, Finrear. Ifrit is for like a generic buff, only for lightning units though, plus crit rate plus 13. Fantastic stats for Cloud. Then just slapping on 20 slash resistance on the bottom just makes him generically tankier or any lightning unit in your group generically tankier. And I really, really love Guard Scorpion on Cloud. Now, what we can do, I won't have to move my screen around anymore because the rest of these are going to be easier to talk about. Next up, the MR card on this list is Coral the Lightning Kitty. Um, stat line, not as good because it's an MR card. 272 HP, 94 attack, who cares about the magic? But that dexterity plus 42 is nice. That will help your damage. Um, for Cloud a little bit, it'll also help you crit a little bit more. Unit effect, agility up 12. That's good, especially if you're missing some agility from gear. Party effect, lightning attack up 20 is good for both versions of Cloud. It's good for both the missile and slash version. Dexterity, again, we just talked about how that's nice for Cloud. And then acquired AP up 30% for lightning units in your group. I mean, who doesn't want more AP, and that's something that Cloud specializes in. This is a very, very good vision card to have either on Cloud or in your group that has Cloud in it. Okay, I Guyon, one I think is floating a little bit under the radar that I haven't seen talked about a ton, is this one. Stat line on it, about 300 HP and 148 attack is really nice. 30 magic, nobody cares, but it does have some decks on it, which is cool. The unit effect of slash resistance penetration is very nice for Cloud. Cloud easily achieves maximum defense pin, so working in some extra slash resistance penetration turns him into a, like, real monster. Like, a real monster. Like, tanks, good luck. Um, unfortunately, he does not get included in the slash attack conditional effect there, but that's okay. Party effect, it's slash attack up for your party of 25 with some accuracy of, what, 15? And then 25% HP for your group. So you can see how these, like, conditional max level effects on, like, I Guyon, plus we go back to Coral, plus we go back to Scorpion Sentinel, which you can't see Scorpion Sentinel because it's too freaking long, but that's HP and potentially some slash resist added on is like bonus effects for lightning groups. So you're not only you're doing a bunch of damage, you're becoming tankier, more durable. That's really nice. Okay, next up, Frederica's Dream. This is a great card for Ranger Cloud, and it's even a good card for him to equip personally. So stat line, 287 HP is a little low, but 162 attack is really nice. And again, nobody cares about the magic. Lightning attack up for the unit effect is very good for Cloud. Um, even when he's on his ranger sub, his sword skills will oftentimes out damage his ranger skills. The, the lightning effect, the lightning up unit effect will help both of his, um, sword and bow skills. It's really good on him. Party effect of missile attack up 35 is really great, especially, like I said, if you're running him with Frederica or another missile unit. And then the missile resist plus 20%, again, another party effect on these lightning cards that just generically makes your lightning team a little bit tankier. Really, really cool. Now, I want to give a special shout out here to Titan as well. I don't think in a lot of cases this is going to be your best choice, 
but if you're running a mixed team, not a mono lightning team, and you're running somebody like a, you know, a piercing unit, Titan's really good for Cloud because the party effect is human killer with physical attacks. Cloud does multiple different damage types. They're all physical, so some human killer from that party effect is really nice. I would not run this on him specifically, but if you're running a rainbow team with Cloud on it and you're looking to boost damage, uh, and you have a piercing unit in there especially, hey, Titan might just be the way to go. Okay, that's what I got for vision cards. Now we're going to move on to the next part of the video, which is his skills and his AI tweaking. Okay, now for the skills part of the video, we're going to jump back into the client here, and we're going to look at clown skills, and we're going to talk about which ones to have on and off, and uh, kind of how the AI will think about this. So first of all, I think the easiest thing, in my opinion, is his soldier, his main job. I leave every single one of these skills on. The important thing to point out here is the order in which the AI likes to use skills. Soldier's Honor. If Cloud can get in range of a teammate and cast this buff on them, and Cloud is not in slot one in your group, he will do it every single time, even before he uses his TMR abilities. His other buff in here, Punisher Mode, he will prioritize using his TMR before he uses this. So, just real quick, the priority here is Soldier's Honor, if he's in range to buff an ally, Trust Master into Punisher Mode. And I'm gonna show that off in actual combat here in just a second. Otherwise, leave all of these on. Cross Slash, extra large damage with Paralysis, really freaking good. Triple Slash, yeah, it's an AoE chain, 100% hit attack, awesome. Braver, low-key, one of Cloud's best moves is Braver. The Slash Resistance debuff on this helps him do insane amounts of damage to tanks. I'm going to show that off in a minute. And then Mega Slash, he will actually use this sometimes, and it's like guaranteed to crit. So that's pretty good. When you get to his sub-jobs, things get a little bit more interesting. Uh, let's start with his Soldier FF7 sub-job. Don't sleep on this one. Infinity's End he will barely ever use, but Blade Burst is a really important skill for Cloud. Notice that it is non-elemental, so if somebody is stacking some Lightning Resist, this big AoE attack that does medium damage will not be resisted by that. So it is a nice option. The AI likes to use this because it does a lot of damage. Okay, Ranger Subjob. Probably his most used subjob that I've seen, and probably his most powerful sub job in a lot of situations um i do this i keep vigilance off cloud does not need any more buffs sharpshoot obviously you're going to keep that on it's core to the ranger tree supercharge uh give and take on this one the charging time on this has killed me many times so i typically leave it off barrage obviously you leave barrage on this is his big aoe wombo combo with fred skill charge same thing as before um the charge time i just don't love and then Poison Arrow is a small damaging attack, but it's instant cast, and he uses this to like clean some people up from range if they just need to be one hit or something. So I turn Charge, Supercharge, and Vigilance off. I leave Poison Arrow, Barrage, and Sharpshoot on. That's my personal build if I'm going Ranger. Now, Nightblade is the most interesting one to talk about, I think. And uh, let's do that. So AP Drain, I'm obviously not using AP Drain right now because it's level one, but the AI won't use it anyway, so you could just leave it on. Spinning Slash, leave that on if you're running this. It gives him a little option if he's right in the middle of people for some large damage. AoE, that's kind of nice. Um, I'll get to the buffs in a second. Stun Blade, he won't use this because he has skills that do more damage typically, but it is a good option, particularly in PvE, for a cheap AP costing skill if you're out of your triple hit attack in PvE. Now, let's talk about concentration and double resist. Right now, if I'm playing Cloud, I'm doing this. I'm turning that off and I'm turning that off because his AI will prioritize concentration over even his main job buff, the one that buffs attack and AP restore. Concentration, he likes it more. Double resist, it's another AE buff, and Cloud's AI really likes to run up to people and buff them. I want him using his TMR, so I would turn these off. The asterisk here, the um, just in case, is concentration does give him the defense pin that he might need if you don't have Aldoa's TMR. In that case, you might consider leaving this on so he cannot care about your target's defense. It just depends on who you're fighting and how many turns you have before you want to engage the enemy, like how you set your teams up to run. Speaking of that, that's it for my like skills breakdown for his main jobs. We're about to get into some actual action so you can see this play out. 
I do want to touch on real quick, though, his other things. This is going to be real quick. Hey, uh, run reflex. Don't even, like, like, he has two other ones here. Who cares? Run reflex. It's the best one. Okay, always also run X Soldier First Class. This is where you get, like, a bunch of your defense pin and more HP is nice. Uh, who cares about evasion rate down? I think I run this in all situations. The second one's a little bit more interesting. Um, I don't actually like Ranger Lore on Cloud. The range plus one, I, I want him to buff and I want him to use his TMR. Now, there might be some situations where you want the range, use it in that case. Focus... Um, this would be something you'd use if you wanted to use his charge and supercharge. It'll give you some missile attack and reduce your activation time. Use it in that situation. Mercenary is move plus one and raise attack. This could be very situationally useful if you want him closing the gap with the enemy quicker and doing more damage or you just need that plus one move. The attack buff on that, however, is not as good as the Nightblade Mastery attack buff. So I run this almost all the time. Attack up, accuracy up, and I don't care about his evasion at all. So, okay, that finishes the skill breakdown. Now we're going to go into fights. We're going to watch Cloud do his thing here. And we're going to start off by uh, showing how the AI actually functions in practice. Okay, now in this one, I'm going to show you what you can do to get Cloud to pop his TMR on turn one. And I'm going to use the current arena map as an example here. Notice that I have Cloud in slot number three in my group. And here my group comes. Cloud's down there by himself. That means 9S is going to run and buff Charlotte. Cloud's alone, so he will prioritize the TMR buff over grouping his allies, grouping with his allies and buffing them. That's really important. If you want Cloud to use bells, if you want Cloud to use like a hasten move plus one TMR armor buff, if you want him using Oldoa's TMR on turn one, you need to separate him from the squad in some way. In this case, I had 9S be faster than Cloud. 9S is going to run to Charlotte and buff him. That leaves Cloud completely by himself. He can cast Oldoa's TMR. And now he will still use his buffs. Like he's still going to buff himself. Um, even though he can't buff his group, he'll just do it on turn two. This just guarantees that I get Oldoa's TMR cast because it's so important for my cloud. And like watch how hard he's going to hit here in a minute. He's about to run up to the enemy cloud and just unload on him. So here that comes. First, we're going to watch like the space chicken because, you know, who doesn't want to see the space chicken for the 9,000th time in their life? And I, it is beautiful though to see it do no damage. First up, watch this. That's a bow using cloud, about 3,000 damage. My cloud is in sword mode. So blade burst, 5,700 damage. It's a one tap, GG. And that's really all I wanted to show from this fight. That's just how to tweak cloud's AI to do the TMR on turn one. We're gonna, we clean up this fight, we win it. Like I could, I could speed up the playback, but you know, let's save some time. Let's move on to the next video. Okay, now for this example, all I did, it's the same team comp, but I swapped 9S and Cloud to different positions, right? They're just in different spots, but watch how this affects the AI. 9S will now run next to Cloud and cast his defense buff, which will trick Cloud's AI into buffing 9S and Cloud, and then Cloud will run forward. So we get our attack and AP restore buff on first. Now, the other the enemy team is going to try and close the gap here, but typically speaking on this map, you have enough turns where the enemy team's not going to be in range of cloud for turn two, which gives you about two turns of buffing in most cases. So watch what cloud's going to do on his second turn. Enemy still coming forward, trying to do their thing. Their clouds with bells. Okay, 9S, go buff Charlotte because that's what you do. Great. We wanted to see cloud. Here he goes. Now, he's going to pop the TMR. He's not in range to go buff Charlotte in this case, so he'll pop his TMR and go look for people to kill. Let's go ahead and play this one out play-by-play-wise. This isn't a pre-recorded one. This one's live. Charlotte, for the enemy team, you know she's going to have a bunch of defense, right? So how can slashing attack Cloud deal with that Charlotte? Well, he's going to get a chance. He's going to run up to her now. He's going to pop cross slash. 7,734 damage. That's a lot of damage. He does not care about her defense at all. And unless she's running a bunch of slash resist or lightning resist, she's not going to be able to resist him. Now, unfortunately, Cloud ended up by himself and got lightning chained down to death. So our hero is out of the fight, but his teammates are really strong. 9S and Charlotte, I have confidence in my boy 9S and my girl Charlotte in 2v1ing the enemy Cloud. Oh man, but he's out here putting some hurt on us. We'll see. 
Okay, there's Linear Spear Shot from 9S. Nice, we're in it. And then Charlotte with the finishing blow. GG, we win. And that's the power of like a slashing cloud team comp. And that's how you want the AI to work, in my opinion, for slashing cloud. If you want that buff on turn one and the TMR on turn two. So we just watched some fights happen. I want to dive into team comps really briefly here because I think this doesn't need a ton of time. Um, the way I think about team comps with Cloud is I like to mix in as many other lightning units as I can to take advantage of the generic lightning buffs that we're getting from these like Scorpion Sentinel cards, etc. Right? Like lightning attack up, critical hit rate up, and slash resist up. Those are super good on 9S and Charlotte. So if you have other lightning units, I do suggest putting them in. I will highlight a couple though. Charlotte, I think that's your best lightning tank option. Um, if you don't have her though, you can easily plug and play somebody like a King Mont or something like that. 9S is a phenomenal unit to go with Cloud. If you picked him up in the near collab, he was a freebie. He's perfect. He has access to slashing type damage with his Nightblade sub. He will be a great combo with Cloud and PvE because they both have three hit lightning chaining attacks. Phenomenal. And he gets all the buffs that these cards give, etc. Now, I want to talk quickly about a missile based team for Cloud. I think Cloud with Frederica might be the strongest team in Arena or Guild Wars right now. Maybe. Like, it's close. It gives Cloud so much range and he does a ton of damage. The asterisk here is you really do need Frederica's Dream, I think, to fully unlock this combo. Um, and it, it really needs to be Frederica, I think, to take advantage of, like, the attack buff from Guard Scorpion, to get all of the buffs from Frederica's Dream, etc. You can plug literally any third unit into this combo, and it's good. I'm using a tank right here, King Mont, and then I'm focusing on some magic resist with, like, Fenrir, Titus's Necklace, the Mage's Habit. So that way, if I can target some mages, we can live through an attack or two and just gun them down with the missiles. If you want to throw in a third missile unit to that duo, there's some really interesting options. I think Nivlu's a cool option. Hell, you could throw Skull in there for a Quicken Bot if you wanted, although Nivlu's a much better option. You could plug in, honestly, a third missile unit if you really wanted to use, like, Lucia or Luartha. Or you could plug in, like, a Winter Victora if you wanted to go, like, kind of an anti-physical unit. Really, there's so many options for the third unit. It's super plug-and-play, in my opinion, for this group. And again, gear, just build to beat something. Notice I'm just focused on magic resist with my gear here. And that's going to do me good. So team comps, those I think are Cloud's best too. He's a good enough missile unit if you don't have Fred Rika and you do want to run him with another missile unit. Yeah, sure, go for it if you want to. But Cloud and Fred is about as good as it gets. Okay, that was like the team comp thing. And it's there's so many units. Let me put my, let me put my uh, face back on the screen for a second here. Alright, and here I am. Now... I want to just say that, like, your account is obviously going to be a lot different than mine. I have almost every unit in the game, Rip, Velric, gosh dang it, but I'll, I'll get Velric someday. Um, that I can make any team I want. You're going to have to just know your account, right? Like, and I'll be happy to answer questions in the comments about anything that you have as far as team building goes, but know who your best lightning units are. Know who your best tanks are. You could easily put Cloud with a tank and a healer and he'd be fine. He's a good enough carry. He can solo carry a team. He can go into a generic slashing damage team. He can fit in a generic missile damage team. He carries Frederica's dream super, super well as a vision card in a mono missile group that even doesn't have Frederica in it too, you're just going to have to mix and match. You know what vision cards and espers you have and I don't. So it's it's harder for me to answer those team building questions if I don't have like 17 screenshots of your account. Just guys, trust me, he is a monster of a carry. He can fit in like most team comps. Those are just the ones I prefer the most. Now, I want to go to the last segment of this video, and that's going to be Cloud as a tank buster. This is where I think he might excel the most, and check out the damage numbers that he's going to put out in this last section. All right, now for the tank buster section of this video, how Cloud can just deal with these tanks, I've put together a little bit of a squad here. Notice I have like my lightning squad that I've been using, um, and Cloud's going to be in his slash attack mode here. Then I have King Mott. I have King Mott geared in what I think is a pretty generically good King Mott gearing, and I have Yuna giving him some slash resist. So let's look at King Mott's stats as we walk into this fight. He's at 63 defense, and he's at... 53% slash resist. Like, I think this is a pretty good representation of what some of the tanks you might be fighting 
in um, Guild Wars or Arena will be. And I'm going to show you how Cloud is specifically guilt built guilt. He is specifically guilt. He feels really bad. No, no. He's specifically built to deal with tanks. Um, and they're going to have a really, really tough time figuring out how to tank him. Now, I need to turn auto off before my AI just wins this fight for me. It looks like I succeeded at that. We're safe. Only one wolf is dead. Now, Charlotte, you're just holding a vision card. Get out of the way. Cloud, I'm going to go ahead and have you pop Uldoas TMR. When I do this, Cloud is at 100% defense pin. He is not going to care about whoever he's hitting defense at all. I'm going to have Yuna just cast re-raise on Mont because there's a chance Mont might die in the making of this video. Now, Mont, I'm going to have you move over here and just chill, right? I just want you to chill. You're going to get re-raise on you. I am going to buff his defense a little bit more and watch that. So Charlotte, pass, pass, Mont, just chill. Cloud, I'm going to go and had, go ahead and have you use your Soldier's Honor buff. And now Cloud is at the point where he's going to be typically, in my opinion. He's used one buff in his TMR. So 9S, why don't you get over here and buff our boy King Mont's defense with shield deployment. And then we're going to check out King Mont's stats and what Cloud can do to like not care about those stats. Okay, everybody else don't do something. King Mont chilling, Cloud. Walk up next to our boy Mont, and if we were to target Mont right now, you can see our auto attack would do 1,514 damage. That's not a ton. It's not like, oh my god, my mind is blown. But let's look at King Mont's stats. He has 78 defense right now, and he has 53% slash resist. So, what can Cloud do about that? Well, he could do his limit break. Let's start with that. Limit break, 4673. That's pretty good. It's about half of his HP. We can do better. Braver. Now, Braver, remember, debuffs slash resistance. It penetrates his slash resistance before it does it. Like, let's read the description of this. Lowers target slash resistance for three turns, then deals damage small. Even though it's small damage, it's doing 5,600 base before critting, which is more than Cloud's Limit Break was doing. In fact, if we look at the rest of these moves, that move is going to do more than any of these other moves despite them having a much bigger multiplier or being a chain triple slash only doing 1900 damage cross slash plus 5134 cross slash plus is a 27 ap skill with extra large damage so the extra large damage skill 5134 damage that's pretty dang good but he doesn't even need to do that the ai will actually just use braver right here for 5600 damage and not only is that 5600 damage it'll probably crit let's see how much damage it actually does well he crit for 6300 so like good luck mont tanking through cloud in that case and that's why cloud is so good at cutting through these monster tanks that we have in the game right now cloud warrior of light like it's so easy to stack slash resist it's slow it's so easy to stack defense and that cloud was pretty well built to handle or that i'm sorry that king mont was pretty well built to handle cloud in theory and cloud is going to take him down in two attacks like no problem and braver is such a good skill for that so that's it guys. I think that's the end of my cloud review video. I hope by watching this, you kind of figured out like how to tweak his AI a little bit to get him to do what you want him to do. I hope I told you like what my favorite espers and vision cards were for him. And that gave you some idea about how to like look at your account and build the best group you can build for cloud. I, I, I can't recommend Odin enough, by the way. I just can't recommend Odin enough for this guy. Anyhow, this is probably a long video. It's in a lot of parts, so I can't see exactly how long it is. Big thank you to everyone who watched the video to the end. Uh, hit the like button if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Use my Amazon coin affiliate link if you need some Vizior. And I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace.